Hi, this is example number two of section 15.7, and we are talking here about angular momentum. So we have a rod that is being subjected to a moment, which is time squared plus two, and it's rotating in this direction, right? And so we have two velocities, and we are being asked to find the velocity of each ball after three seconds. If each ball has an initial velocity of two meters per second when time is equal to zero. So we want to relate moment, which is given in function of, as a function of time, and velocity doing an elapsed time. So the best equation to use for that, for that problem is the equation of impulse and momentum, which you recall from the theory that we can say that the integral of the moments, all the moments apply, will be equal to the difference between the angular momentum in a second position minus the angular momentum in the first position. It, that is a vectorial function, and the definition of angular momentum is the momentum of the linear momentum. So it, the angular momentum is the, actually let me put it in a general form, so it's just the angular momentum respect one specific point, let's call this point O, so I'm going to take all my moments respect to that origin, so I can actually, this is the inertial coordinate system, but I can write a, another system attached to my moving object, and I will take moment respect to that origin of that coordinate system. And what I'm doing right here is taking the moment of the linear momentum. If we see here that all the motion, even though this is a three-dimensional problem, all the motion occurs in only one plane, which is x and y. So I can write that as in, the, in k equals to the distance mass and velocity, because the velocity is in y direction and the distance is in x direction. So when I take that moment of the distance and the velocity, give me k direction, so this is in k direction. So this is a scalar equation because this is equals to that. If we want to be very strict with our free body diagram, we have to include also the weights, but the weights, as you see, are perpendicular to our motion, so they won't have any contribution to our angular momentum. It doesn't have any uh, contribution to this momentum or that momentum, external momentum. We apply our equation, and here we have only one momentum, which is that that is applied. So we have the integral between zero and three seconds of d squared plus two differential time, and then we have the two balls. So we will have in this two times the distance, which is 0 0.5, times the mass, which are, we are given, that is 10 times the velocity in the final position of those balls, minus two times 0 0.5, then the initial velocity and the initial velocity is given. So we have to integrate this part of the equation, which is 3 cubed divided by 3 plus 2t, and all that evaluated between 0 and 3, and that will be equals to, uh, that's 10 v2 minus 10 v1, and v1 is known, that is 2. So from here we see that the only unknown that we have is the final velocity or the velocity in the final position. So we, we solve for that. We first we have to uh, substitute our 3 equals 2. We can actually add that to solve for V2. So for V2 and we get that V2 is equals to 3.5 meters per second. And it gave us a, a bigger value than the one that it had initially because we are applying a 
moment that is increasing in time. So when time is equal to zero, that moment is equal to only two, and then as seconds pass, that moment increases, so the velocity of this thing rotating it also increases.